All right, you all, my first reaction video I've been watching with great interest as the Asus ROG Ally X launched and Bazite was able to um, get enabled on this device before it came out. And I kind of wanted to, NerdNest is our host here, and gonna kind of talk the story on how we were able to enable uh, Linux on, on this device and the kind of story and and kind of talk about our end users and what our target end end user audiences because um you know I, f I feel like a lot of linux users kind of miss the point when they look at systems like ours and um you know i as i was watching this video i was really happy to see what an end user uh, with an invisible linux operating system looks like so let's let's listen in here that it fits my gaming style a lot more so i installed bazite and there were a number of problems when I first installed it, just, you know, being new hardware, right? So like the controls weren't mapped quite correctly. The speakers weren't working, things like that. I was lucky enough to reach out uh, through High Tech Low Life to one of the Bazite devs. And we ended up in a group chat with some other devs of other uh, software that, that goes upstream to Bazite, like Handheld Demon, which we were talking about earlier. And in short order, they fixed a lot of those issues. All right. So... This is just a perfect example. You've seen this a bunch of times. You get enthusiasts that have a thing and you have nerds that know how to fix it. And it's all a matter about connecting them together. And that's just what we do in open source like every day. So this made me really happy because they, they it only took them a few days to enable the device. And they didn't have access to the hardware directly, which is amazing and kind of testament to um, to what the Bazai team is building. This made me very happy. And I was, I was surprised, but also not surprised because you do hear this a lot, but you know, the kind of cleverness and things like that, that open source people are able to, um, you know, to cobble together with limited resources. You love to see it, right? Uh, so I was very happy to have a basically fully functional Bazite. And to me, not only better than Windows, but I think right now it operates, the experience that I'm having is mostly better than the Steam Deck experience with SteamOS. Is there anything remaining? This is very interesting as well, because one of the things we have noticed is that, you know, if, if you grab the valve specific stuff for game scope and all of that things, most of the stack that they're using AMD hardware, that kind of stuff, just by the very virtue of being able to deliver like a newer kernel and all of the things that Fedora gives, you know, uh, you're always, you're almost always going to get a benefit that you're unaware of, right? Even if that's just, um, you know, six months to a year of, of better kernel improvements because the kernel moves fast that they need to fix there's still a reconnect there's still like a suspend resume bug okay and in fact there was like a little regression with that but basically when you suspend resume it has to like reconnect everything and one of the things it has to reconnect are the controls and sometimes it just does not reconnect so you have to like suspend resume again or you have to cold turn it you know cold boot it and and vrr works through like game scope on there nice that's so VR sweet. works yep game, oh game yeah scope it does is, is the best it's great it's great yeah it it, it is a, so rich told me about this and so i had ordered i cannot wait to see to hear what bill says um a four terabyte m.2 drive it arrived on wednesday and then basically that was my Thursday. My Thursday was I installed the four terabyte M.2 drive in this and then um, did a cloud recovery to Windows because I wasn't sure what to do. Like right. I, I did a cloud recovery to, to Windows. Then I downloaded Bazite and installed it. And I, I'm going to tell people, listen, if I can figure it out, you can figure it out because I am not super techie. Okay. So I got Bazite installed. It's not a difficult process, but it is a process. Like it's not simply like double click a thing and you're all set. Mm -hmm. There is a bunch of stuff to go through. You're gonna wanna have a keyboard and all this stuff. But I ended up going through the thing, getting it all set up. And then now when I just turn it on, it's just like Steam OS. It takes a second Boom. to boot up. That's it. So here's what I wanted to highlight out. Yeah, it's funny. He's like, I'm not a technical person at all. And he like runs this high production podcast. Um, you know, this is one of those things. And I, hmm, I, I've been trying to put a lot of thought into what I'm going to say here because I've been working on our documentation and, and what we want to do. Cause usually typically 
in standard Linux circles, I, you know, I think everyone's pretty much noticed that traditional Linux YouTubers and stuff aren't covering Bazite, right? Like, uh, you know, outside of a handful of things, people aren't covering Bazite in the quote unquote Linux community. Right. And, you know, it's one of those things where we don't really target traditional Linux, uh, users, you know, um, usually in Reddit threads, people are always asking, they're like, Hey, when are you going to fix all these limitations? Uh, this isn't ready yet. Um, you know, I, if I can't do this, then I'm not going to use it. I think a lot of Linux users misunderstand that you are not the target audience, right? Like, um, you know, the, we are building these systems for people who don't want to do any of those things. Right. So, um, I don't think these folks have an opinion on system D I certainly don't think they have an opinion on Wayland. They don't care about flat pack overrides. They don't care about snaps. Uh, they they don't care about app images. They don't care about any of that crap, right? They just want a working, working device, right? And and that's kind of what we're going for. And sometimes um, I, I think it's it's difficult for people to understand that um, this is a transition to a new Linux model, right? It's not a optional thing, right? Like your old X11 apps that are unmaintained are probably never going to work, right? So um, I just do find this interesting because now as Bazite's becoming more popular, you start to see the Linux elitists who think that, you know, doing everything by hand over and over again is a flex, whereas we believe that, you know, if you've done something more than twice, it should maybe automate it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. So, you know, I, I do kind of feel that um, this is like a, a kind of shift in the perception of what a next generation Linux desktop wants to be. And I think it just kind of proves that, I can't believe I have to say this. When we catch the Linux desktop up to where the rest of Linux was in 2016, the, uh, the sky's the limit, right? So like we can get basic reliability, we can get the basic composability uh, down, we can... Stop dealing with all the packaging that like all this, all this crap that everyone's arguing about that, like we haven't had to deal with in two years. Um, you know, it's only a, a few short hundreds of thousands of lines of YAML away. So anyway, with that, I, you know, this is pretty cool. I've spent the last two days watching nothing but like that Bazite videos. And, um, if there's anything that I've, I've learned from this is that like, um, you know, listening to the people that want to work in computer, that group, that pop that population of people will always be larger. Yeah. than people that think, um, that Linux is fine the way it is. Right. So, um, if any, you know, if anything, I believe that this helps prove the model. And, uh, of course, if you've been listening to the channel for a while, you believe that the device, the desktop, the server, it's the same thing. So, um, with that, have a great day and enjoy it.